In this video, we're going to talk about the derivative of the trig functions. We're not going to prove any of the derivatives here. I'm just going to give most of them to you. We'll start with a little talk of the sine derivative. After that, I'll give you the remaining five. There are videos available that do have the proof, so feel free to look at those and make sure you understand how the proofs work. But right now, I just want to get you started with using the derivative of the trig functions. So that's what we'll focus on here. What we're looking at here is a trigonometric graph. And if you haven't recognized it, it is y equals the sine of x. So there's the graph. Remember, we're talking about derivatives. So the derivative means the slope of the tangent line. So if I get a new color here, and I'm going to draw some tangent lines here. And I'm going to focus on the easier ones. So the tangent line at this point up here would look like that. Tangent line here would look like that. Here and here. And we'll draw a couple more. And finally, these last two. OK. So what we have there are tangents at each of those points. And we focused on every pi over 2. Now, the slope of these tangent lines is the derivative. That's what derivative means. So the slope of the tangent line here is 0. This is a horizontal line. Slope is 0. And we actually have that occurring here, 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 and here. So at each of those points, starting with negative 3 pi over 2, we're going to plot the slope of the tangent line. So there it's 0. Negative pi over 2, it's 0. At pi over 2, it's 0. And at 3 pi over 2, it's 0. So there's each of the horizontal tangent lines. Now we need to estimate these slopes. Well, this line here, the slope is definitely negative, as it's going from high on the left to low on the right, so it's negative. And the value that we would assign to that, it's approximately equal to negative 1. Now, if you wanted to extend it and get two points, you could see that it would be negative 1, but I'm just going to let you know. And just by visualizing it, we can estimate it to be negative 1. So we're going to plot that point. This here has the same absolute value approximately. The steepness you can see is the same, but the direction is different. So that's because it's positive 1. Here we have negative 1 again. And here we finish with positive 1. Now, if we connect all these points to show what's happening to the slope as we go between them all, you should see something very interesting. Let me try to sketch this in some sort of smooth manner here. And this nice red curve here should be familiar because that's y equals the cosine of x. So what we see here, and this is a perfectly good way to demonstrate that this is indeed the case, given the function y equals sine of x, the derivative, or the slope of the curve, is equal to the cosine of x. And that's really our first derivative rule to remember. So the derivative of sine is cosine. Let's move ahead now and look at the other trig functions. So if we have y equals cosine of x, then the derivative with respect to x is negative sine of x. If we have y equals the tan of x, then the derivative dy by dx, or the slope of that curve, is going to be secant squared of x. Don't forget we're going to 
have a video available with the proof of all these, but we just want to get started with looking at them. If y equals the cosecant of x, or the reciprocal of sine, then the derivative with respect to x is negative cosecant x cotan x. And we'll keep going, only two left. We'll look at secant next, but I'm going to write secant just a little different, just so you see that this is still the same. We want to take the derivative of secant, but I'm going to write it for u this time, where u is some function of x. So we're just going to use the chain rule with our rule here. So the derivative of y with respect to x then, of secant, is going to be secant u times tan u, but since u is a function of x, the whole thing, and we'll put it in brackets, although it's not necessary, is multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. And that's four, we did sine already, that leaves us one more. We'll do that one in blue. So when y is the cotan of x then, then the derivative of y with respect to x is negative cosecant squared of x. And we'll add sine to it just so they're all in one place. If y is sine, and we'll do u again, then the derivative of y with respect to x is cosine of u times the derivative of u, because again, u is a function of x, so that's just the chain rule. So there's our six rules. You definitely want to memorize them. You use them a lot. The proofs, like I said, are in another video, so feel free to look at them, understand where they all come from, but make sure you memorize what each of the rules are. Notice I've done three in blue here, and I didn't randomly choose which ones were in blue. Little hint that sometimes helps students remember these, or at least remember which ones are negative, is the ones I did in blue are all starting with the letter C. What does that have to do with anything? Well, they also happen to be the ones that are negative. So if you're taking the derivative of a trig function that starts with C, you're going to have a negative one. Little hint that might help save you some marks. So look for the next few videos where I'll demonstrate the proofs of each of the trig derivatives.